So I think that's really what my generation is going to be showing, the, the, the normalization of the black man. Niall Fitch's greatest role won't be scripted. The 19-year-old actor, you know him from his portrayal of the younger version of Randall Pearson on NBC's This Is Us, knows that his generation of actors is called to push Hollywood to do better. With the support of his mother and father, he pursued his dream at three years old of a career in the entertainment industry. And now, he's starring in Disney's Secret Society of Second Born Royals as Prince Tuma, the first live action black prince. We chat. So you started in this business at three years old. What made you so sure that this was an industry that you wanted to enter at that time? Uh, well, at the age of three, I don't think you truly understand. Uh, yeah. However, you know, for my parents, it was really just a way for them to get, you know, college money for me. Uh, that's, that's really how my dad presented it to my mom. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this is an easy way for him to get college money, you know, and then if it's something that takes off, you know, then we'll, you know, address that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> when we get there. Mm -hmm. And it started off as me doing print and modeling. And then that turned to, you know, guest commercials and like guest star roles on like Tyler Perry shows and stuff like that in Atlanta. What was the moment, uh, especially as you look back on it, that made this all feel very real? Uh, when I actually did have my first commercial, it was more of a solidifier for my parents that, all right, this is something that we're going to push because they saw how comfortable and how happy I was. Because when you're at that young age, you know, it, it's really hit or miss when you show up on set. Uh, it's either you look at it as it, like it's fun or you get tired of having to do a bunch of takes. And my dad didn't see that in me. So I remember uh, my parents tell me, I don't remember, but they tell me uh, when he came home, uh, he told my mom like, Oh yeah, I, I see it. Like, this is, this is, you know, this is what he should be doing. And, you know, I think once they made that choice, you know, for me, it really, I didn't really have that moment. I feel like until I, I'd say when I booked the Lion King, cause I, I did that on, uh, on Broadway and I went from a place of seeing it happen and being like, I don't know if I can do that mom to then, you know, a year and a half later, you know, I'm young, Simba and I'm, ha I'm doing it. And I think that's really when it, it set on me, like, Oh, like, you know, there's something different about, you know, you when it comes to this craft. That's amazing. And you guys actually relocated um, because your career was, was taking off. Was there like a, a sit down at the, at the kitchen table to discuss really being, you know, all hands on deck to, to support the growth of your career? No. And I don't think it should have been. My opinion shouldn't matter as a 11 year old kid, you know, like, my opinion matters to the extent of, is this something that you want to do? Like, are you ready if we take that commitment? You know, I, that was really the only conversation I was had with me. How, you know, but my parents really had to have a bunch of conversations because they had their own business in Atlanta. You know, they, they were already set up in Atlanta. That's where they grew up. They had all their friends, family and stuff in Atlanta. Uh, so it was more of them having to talk and be like, okay, how do we do this? Or how do we how do we set him up for success? And and of course the role as young Randall Pearson um, is fantastic. People okay. love him. People love you in it. How did that how did that role come to you? And what was that process like? For me, when I moved to LA, I moved with a plan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, something that I had set my my mind to. I got the call for This Is Us, so you know I don't book it. Uh, and then two three months later, I get a call randomly when I'm coming back from school. And uh, they're like, we want, want to bring you back in. Uh, it's a next day call. I go in. Uh, aren't a lot of Randalls. I'm telling my mom, it, it seems like, you know, they're not auditioning a lot of people. You know, it, it seems like it was a, you know, uh, not a lot of people call, you know, so I'm, I'm excited. I really enjoyed my audition. The next day I'm coming back from school, I get a call saying, hey, you booked it. You got to head down to LA for a fitting because you're working this weekend. So wow. it all happened within like four or five days. And then I was, 
I was shooting that weekend. So it, it was all super, super quick, which is, which is crazy because yeah. I've been in this industry for three years and I feel like this monumental role happened in less than a week or, you know, so to say. Where do you pull from to, to help bring Randall Pearson to life? Well, the funny thing is a lot of the stuff that Randall has dealt with, I've dealt with in my real life. My father passed away and my father passed away. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Uh, I mean, it happened when we were in New York and I actually had to move back down to Atlanta because we were in such a financial, you know, situation. So when I, that, that was one of the reasons coming out to LA, I had that goal because I, you know, I knew I had to, I had to do it. But um, what I pull from is I've been blessed to where when Randall's writing essays for college, mm -hmm. I'm literally writing essays for college. You know, I've, I've been blessed to be, you know, to portray a role where I'm surrounded by, you know, I'm a black man in a, in a white room trying to, you know, understand my footing. So it's easy to pull from it, you know, and the, the being able to talk about the anxiety and stuff like that, that while that's not something that I've personally gone through, I 100% understand it. Uh, and I, I, I want it to be authentic. I didn't, I didn't want it to seem, you know, fake. So I, I, I contacted friends who had anxiety to mm. talk about how I could bring it to life because I, I, didn't, I didn't want it to seem, you know, like I was acting, you know, I, I, I wanted it to be, I wanted people to be able to get therapy off of it, you know, to be able to be like, oh, like, all right, I'm not, I'm not weird. You know, Randall is also going through this and learning how to deal with it, you know? So I, I've been lucky enough to be able to have people close to me or be going through things in my life mm. where, you know, I'm able to just bring it to, to the camera. Man, well, I know uh, you're your father's wildest dream. I'm, I'm sure he is very proud of the work that you're doing in this town uh, right now. And I'm sure you think about that often too. Uh, thank you for sharing that that with me. Um, you guys are back to work for, for This Is Us, uh, I think. Uh, what's that been like or how has that been in all of this? So uh, we just found out that we're going back. I, uh, I mean, that the show is coming back out November 10th, I believe. Uh, yeah. So right now we're just all trying to get prepared for that. Uh, Right now I'm working on another film. So I, I'm still trying to even get used to set now with always having a mask on and actors really are the only ones able to take it off. And that's really just on set when we're about to go tape. So, you know, it, it's a lot of getting used to, uh, but I'm just glad to be back to work. You know, yeah. I, like that's something I really realized over quarantine, like how much I missed it, you know, and how much like I need, like, you know, my creative juices flowing. All right. I don't like saying that. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't like that. <laughs> but I, might <laughs> I love that. Well, you have more great work coming because, of course, you have this fantastic uh, film that's premiering on Disney Plus in the month of September. Tell me a little bit about about the Secret Society of Second Born <laughs> Royals. Did I get that right? It. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so Secret Society of Second Born Royals is kind of like Avengers meets Kingsman. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen e either of them, but- uh, Yes, yes you know, and yes. <laughs> kind of like, a, you know, the, we're, we're a, a, a secret society of like teenage kids with abilities uh, and trying to learn how to do that and traverse this world where there's royalty and, you know, uh, that that whole aspect. So it, I, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, my, my role, Tuma, you know, he, he's real grounded, you know, he's not, uh, he's not a stereotype. Like that's something that I really cared about. Cause if I'm the first black prince, you know, I don't want to be the first black prince and, you know, uh, live action black prince. Let me correct that before the Disney fans get on me. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to play the first black prince and not be an authentic portrayal of what a black man is. Cause, uh, what we really want is just, you know, not to always have to play the thug or for there always to be a thug, for there to be more roles, you know? It, uh, and that will, that will come with over time. And I think that will come with people being able to see a Randall or a Sterling or a Lonnie that they're always able to watch or they see the first Black Prince or they see the, you know, they see Caleb in Stranger Things or they, you know, they, they see my homie Deshay in SWAT to where, you know, we're, we're not, 
a stereotype, you know, but they got to see it first to, to be able to even fathom it. So I think that's really what my generation is going to be showing the, the, the normalization of the black man, you know, uh, and that's really what I'm here, here for. Up next on another act, Gabrielle Union.